TCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about HELP syndrome. HELP syndrome or hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes like SGOT, SGPT, and low platelets. This syndrome is mainly seen in pregnant ladies. It is seen in pregnant lady or postpartum uh, ladies characterized by hemolysis with a microangiopathic blood smear picture, elevated SGOT, SGPT and low platelets that means platelet count less than 1 lakh. It's a severe form of preeclampsia. And sometimes we can diagnose even preeclampsia if the patient is having uh, chronic hypertensive diseases. This disease is characterized by worsening or resistant hypertension and acute elevation of BP, new onset proteinuria, sudden increase in proteinuria, both can occur. New end organ dysfunction after 20 weeks of gestation. In a uh, lady with pregnant lady with chronic hypertension history. So these are the typical scenario where the patient develops HELP syndrome. However, patient can have hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes and low platelets. There are a lot of other conditions can present similar picture like for example SLE if you take patient can have hemolysis elevated liver enzymes low platelets but or sepsis you take there also you can get malaria you take there also you get similar picture but without any other uh, illness only in the presence of chronic hypertension if the patient develops a pregnant lady develops this type of clinical picture then we can call it as HELP syndrome. Criteria for diagnosis of preeclampsia is systolic BP more than 140 millimeter of mercury, diastolic BP more than 90 millimeter of mercury, at least two occasions four hours apart after 20 weeks of gestation in a previously normotensive patient and new onset one or more of the following. One is proteinuria, more than 3.3 gram in 24-hour urine specimen or protein creatinine ratio, zero, more than 0 0.3 milligram per milligram in a random urine specimen or dipstick more than 2 plus proteins. So proteinuria is present. Platelet count less than 1 lakh. Serum creatinine more than 1.1 milligram per deciliter. Liver transaminase SGOT SGPT at least twice the upper limit of normal concentration. Normally we get uh, 40 as the normal level. So if it is more than 80 itself, it's a diagnostic criteria. Pulmonary edema, new onset, onset and persistent headache uh, can also be there. Visual symptoms are very, very important. Blurring of vision, flashing of lights, sparks of light, scotomas in the visual field. So these are the criteria to diagnose preeclampsia. So if a patient who is having preeclampsia, they have high chance of uh, HELP syndrome. HELP syndrome develops in 0.1 to 1% of the pregnant women overall. Among women with severe preeclampsia, eclampsia, 1-2% to 2 have microangiopathic hemolysis and it can be considered to have HELP syndrome in them. So microangiopathy and activation of intravascular coagulation is the main problem behind HELP syndrome. So all the laboratory findings may uh, point towards this microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Kidney can be involved in 
uh, help syndrome in some patients. Now, previous history of preeclampsia or eclampsia or HELP syndrome itself is a risk factor for HELP syndrome in pregnant ladies. Symptoms usually present between 28 to 37 weeks of gestation. But onset in the late second trimester or at term is also commonly seen. Now, if we see the frequency of signs and symptoms in HELP syndrome, proteinuria is the most common, 86 to 100 percent, hypertension 80 to 88 percent, right upper quadrant or epigastric pain 40 to 90, nausea vomiting 24 to 84 percent, headache 33 to 61 percent, visual changes 10 to 20 percent, jaundice 5 percent. Even when there is elevation of SGOT, SGPT, jaundice Clinical jaundice may not be seen in many patients. That's why you can see the frequency is only 5%. But proteinuria, hypertension, abdominal pain, vomiting, all very common. Around 20% can have visual symptoms. Lab workup in HELP syndrome is complete blood count. From that, we can know whether uh, platelets are reduced. Suppose it's an infection and mimicking help, the WBC count may be elevated like a bacterial infection. Peripheral smear will tell you about microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So it will give a picture of hemolytic anemia blood picture. SGOT, SGPT can be elevated more than 80, but bilirubin may be slightly elevated or sometimes it may not be elevated. Creatinine can be altered if the kidneys are involved. Now, one criteria for diagnosis, that is lab criteria or Tennessee classification, hemolysis can be established with peripheral smear with schistocytes and Burr cells, serum bilirubin more than 1.2 mg per deciliter, low serum haptoglobinin, severe anemia unrelated to blood loss. So, to diagnose hemolysis, we have to take a peripheral smear. And in hemolysis, we can see bilirubin will be elevated. Indirect hyperbilirubinemia can be there. LDH will be elevated. Blood can be low. Hemolysis leads to anemia. So, these are the blood pictures of hemolysis in lab investigation. SGOT, SGPT can be elevated more than two times of a upper limit of normal value. Platelets will be less than 1 lakh cells per, per microliter. So, these are the major diagnostic criteria. This classification is called as Tennessee classification. Now, American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist uh, have got something similar but slightly different from the previous one that LDH is a, they have mentioned LDH as a marker of hemolysis LDH elevation is classically seen in hemolysis so that is a simple investigation before getting the peripheral smear itself we can get LDH so there is more than uh, 600 so before getting means uh, uh, I mean about uh, uh, point of care instruments but uh, peripheral smear can be done in microscope uh, and an uh, expert can tell uh, fast about uh, hemolysis. But routine setup, it will take some time. So LDH will be elevated. So that's a uh, quicker investigation. Uh, uh, SGOT, SGVT will be elevated. Platelet counts are low. So all these investigations can be done in point of care inst instruments. So in emergency room, we can make a diagnosis of uh, hemolysis, uh, elevated liver enzymes and platelet count very fast. Subclassifications are available, class 1, class 2, class 3. They all depend on the uh, counts, uh, what we have seen, platelet count less than 50,000 plus LDH more than uh, 600. SGOT, SGPT more than 70, class 1, platelet count more than 50,000, uh, but less than 1 lakh. 
LDH more than 600, STO to SCPT more than 70, class 3 plated count more than 1 lakh but less than 1 lakh 50,000, LDH more than 600 and STO to SCPT more than 40. So depending on the class, the severity is coming down you can see here. Now the differential diagnosis is mainly acute fatty liver of pregnancy. There also you can get elevated liver enzymes, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, pregnancy related hemolytic uremic syndrome and SLE. So all these things will have similar laboratory features. So it will be difficult to make a diagnosis uh, especially in patients who is having SLE, they will have all clinical features including sometimes hypertension and eclampsia like features. So SLE will be a close differential diagnosis and SLE will, uh, will have complication that is why SLE alone will not make a diagnosis of uh, uh, differential diagnosis of HELP syndrome but SLE and its complication like liver enzymes can be elevated, low platelet count, proteinuria, hypertension, everything can be seen in SLE. So you can see this chart, uh, you can see the differential diagnosis. Help and acute fatty liver of pregnancy, the main features are, difference in features are hypertension. Hypertension is a classical feature seen in uh, HELP syndrome, but it is not that classical in uh, fatty liver of pregnancy. Proteinuria is not seen in fat liver of pregnancy or incidence is less. Fever is not seen in HELP syndrome but it is very common in fat liver of pregnancy. Jaundice is minimum. We have seen that STOT SGPT is mildly elevated but bilirubins are not that elevated. So like that uh, differentiating features can be there with TTP, HUS and SLE. You can see the SLE hypertension is seen in both HELP and SLE. Proteinuria is seen both in HELP and SLE. Fever is absent in HELP syndrome. It can be absent in SLE also, but if there is a flare of SLE, it can be elevated. Otherwise, it is not, uh, uh, not a typical feature of SLE, but since it is an inflammatory disease, you can get jaundice, very mild jaundice seen in HELP syndrome. Jaundice is either not seen or mildly seen in SLE with exacerbation also. Nausea vomiting is uh, not a classical feature of any of these diseases but here 40 percent you can see. Abdominal pain again you can see in both conditions. Central nervous system examination uh, involvement can be seen in both. So if we see clinically one of the close differential diagnosis for HELP syndrome is SLE with exacerbation in a pregnant lady. They will have all features. Now we can see the treatment plan for uh, HELP syndrome. HELP syndrome treatment is same like uh, uh, preeclampsia or eclampsia since the clinical features, presentation, complication all are similar to uh, eclampsia and preeclampsia. We treat in the same line of uh, eclampsia and preeclampsia. Seizures are controlled with magnesium sulfate. Antihypertensive medications should be started to control the BP. We can control the BP with either labetalol or uh, alpha dopa. Any drug can be used nowadays uh, in eclampsia, preeclampsia, help syndrome. Labetalol is a uh, very useful drug in emergency medicine. Uh, NTG also can be tried, but uh, we use labetalol uh, to control the BP in most of these conditions. Immediate delivery like eclampsia, here also we should try, is a treatment of choice if the uh, age of gestation is more than 34 weeks. Vaginal delivery is preferred more than 30 weeks gestation if there is no obstructive con contraindications and if both mother and fetus are stable. Caesarean should be considered less than 30 weeks of gestation. Corticosteroids for reducing maternal morbidity are not clearly beneficial but may be used if the platelet count is less than 50,000. So in HELP syndrome as such it is not very useful but if the platelets are very low 
mostly these uh, platelets are low because of uh, immune mediated destruction so corticosteroids may be helpful in this type of condition so they can be tried platelet transfusion can be tried in severe thrombocytopenia or bleeding tendencies due to thrombocytopenia postpartum plasma exchange with fresh frozen plasma also can be tried to remove uh, any immune mediated destruction occurring rapid destruction occurring to remove the antibodies and all we can try this type of methods so the main treatment is control the bp control the seizures so are two important things then as soon as possible delivery should be attempted so these are the main treatment of choice in help syndrome so we have discussed about help syndrome one of the common complications seen in pregnancy one of the major differential diagnosis of help syndrome help syndrome can be associated with preeclampsia eclampsia gestational hypertension proteinuria in pregnancy all these things are close associated problems but if the patient is having already having sle that will be the close mimicker of help syndrome almost all features explained in help can be seen in uh, sle with exacerbation in pregnancy other conditions like acute fatty ever uh, in pregnancy ttp hus all these things will have similar features here the main uh, treatment options are same like eclampsia treatment op options so there is no difference in uh, major treatments of uh, help syndrome and eclampsia thank you